Hey folks, we're going to take a quick look at adding bars to our game now. Various bars like the health bar, potentially the energy bar, and the bars that show how long perks have left to go. And we'll start with the easiest of those, which will be the health bar and the energy bar. Both work in the same way. So we're going to insert a new symbol, and I'll call it health bar. We can export it for ActionScript or we could do it in the timeline. Um, in fact, I'm going to do neither. <laughs> I'm not going to export it for anything. We're just going to manipulate it from the level class. So I'm going to press OK there. So many different ways you can do things now. I've just struggled to decide on one. You can choose the best. I'll show you two different ways here. And I'm going to draw out a bar. Just change my line colours to white. Um, the fill can be a health colour, green. We'll draw a little rectangle starting from 0, 0 so it's easier to position. We'll um, correct it in a sec. So just draw a bar and then I'm going to select it all. Come to the properties here and just position it exactly so. We'll set it to 0, 0. We'll make it 120 wide and maybe 15 high. I'm going to select the colour and I think I'll, um, shall I put a gradient on? I think it best shows the mask if I do. So if I come to the colour and choose a linear gradient here, I'm going to go from a red colour to a green colour. So when we can see green, we know we've got some health. It's a bit disgusting in the middle. Let's go for a healthy kind of orange if we can find one. Not having much luck there. Maybe just a different green. I don't know. That'll do. I'm not going to get hung up on the graphics, that's not the point. But just the gradient shows, makes the uh, mask a bit more relevant. So I'm going to copy that, that particular um, bar. In fact, I'm going to cut it. So I've cut it out and I'm going to lock the top layer that's got the outline. I'm going to insert a new layer underneath. I'm going to paste in place. And I'm going to add another layer above that, paste in place again. Right click on that new layer and make it a mask. Now a mask uses the shape of itself. If I just unlock it and maybe paint it white so we know. Go, go with blue. The, the shape of a mask reveals content below it. So this layer 2 here is a child of this mask or it's under this mask. It's being masked by layer 3. If we lock them both we can see what's revealed. If I unlock layer 3 and resize it, so take the content of layer 3 and shrink it and then lock it again you can see that we only get half of layer 2 there because I resized the mask so we can only see layer 2 where layer 3 overlaps it and we're going to animate layer 3 so I'm just going to edit it back to its full size right click on it and make it a shape tween I'm going to click on the keyframe create shape tween and in this case I'm going to go to frame 100 Insert a normal frame for all three layers by pressing F5. Insert a keyframe for my shape tween by either clicking and pressing F6 or just right clicking, inserting a keyframe. And at frame 100, when we've got 100% health, I want everything visible, so I'm going to leave the bar there. But on frame 1 here, I'm going to scale it back. So on frame 1, it's going to be as small as I can manage it. I might zoom in just to get that right down to nothing. And there we go. So frame 1 it's tiny, frame 100 it's full and if I press enter I can preview that so you can see that the mask fills up up to a frame 100, up to frame 100 sorry. And if, I, if I lock the layer you can see the intended result. So we can see that the health bar fills up by means of a mask. That's the health bar pretty much done. So I'm going to hop back to the main scene, find my level. Fastest way is probably through the library. Just double click on the level. So we're now editing it. Drag in a health bar. So I'll have that up at the top. Maybe up there. Give it some text. So next to it, we'll just quickly type health. That really doesn't need to be dynamic, so just change that back to static text. Position it, 
again zoom in just if you want things a bit easier to work with position the health bar in so a suitable place and give it a, an instance name that's important so here with the, the health bar selected I'm going to call it a health bar with a camel case in action save that and I'm going to hop into my level class now and find a place to update my HUD. I'm just going to collapse some bits like this bit here really doesn't need to be out in the open. We don't seem to have a comment for it so I'll comment one in we'll have update the HUD. And in this I'm going to have a go to and stop for my health bar. So it'll be health bar dot go to and stop. And the frame we want to go to and stop on is the percentage of health that the player currently has. And in its current form, it's something along the lines of, in brackets, the player dot health over 10 times 100. So that would give us a percentage. Do I need two brackets? No. Too open, too close. Let's just check it. If I save that, test it, go to the game, we should see a health bar. So it's full at the moment because we're on 100% health, so it's on frame 100. If I get hit now, bang, we can see that we lose health. Let's just make sure it goes all the way down to nothing. The good thing about movie clips as well is like, at the moment we're on negative health. So it's probably telling it to go to and stop on frame minus 10. But movie clips are clever enough to know that they don't have a minus 10 frame. So they don't they don't throw errors, they just deal with it. Maybe not the most well, maybe not the safest way to handle things, but we, you know, we could have an if to make sure that this never goes below zero. Really no need though since the movie clip doesn't mess up. So that's the health bar done, that's one way of doing things. Let's have a look at the perk bars as well. So we'll do a, a bar to display how long a perk has left. To do this slightly different. We could um, we could actually do it in the perk. We could turn the perk into a graphic, into a sprite instead of just having it as nothing. Let's do that. We'll uh, we'll jump into the perk class. We'll import flash dot display dot sprite. So. So these uh, perks are now going to extend sprite. So public class perk extends sprite. Which means now when we update it, we can uh, draw into it. We're also going to need to bring text into it as well. So uh, we'll have a look at that. In fact, the fastest way to do it would just be to draw a perk in the library. Anyway, we'll do the bar first. So in this update, what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear the graphics. So graphics.clear. Now that it's a sprite, we have access to that. And I'm going to draw a rectangle to represent the remaining time on this perk. Which means we'll have to have some indicator for the max amount of time this perk's allowed to live. So up here in the, the imports and the variables and so on, I'm going to make a protected variable uh, called max lifespan. And it's going to take this when we make it. Make it an int. Max time to live for HUD purposes. And in here, lifespan is going to be L and max lifespan is also going to be L. The difference is that lifespan will tick down and max lifespan won't. We'll keep it constant. We can't actually declare it as a constant because we need to set it in here. And now when we update, we've cleared the graphics and now we're going to draw a rectangle to represent the remaining time of this perk. So let's make a variable to get the percentage. So var percentage equals uh, lifespan, put this in brackets, lifespan divided by max lifespan, and we'll 
we'll times that by 100. So that gives us the percentage. If we make that a number. And then underneath, we'll uh, draw the rectangle. So graphics dot begin fill. And you can choose a color here. I'm just going to go for white. So oh, X, oh, 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 sorry, FF, FF, FF. And graphics dot draw rect. And here we input different bits. So X and Y are where the rectangle starts. So I'm going to start at 0, comma, 0. The width, this is going to be the percentage. In fact, we don't actually need the 100 there. Let's get rid of the 100. The percentage there is going to be between 0 and, 0 and 1. So it's not really a percentage. It's more of a fraction. Let's call it fraction. And the rectangle will be fraction times, and then we could have a set width then. So that could be a bar width, bar height. And these are going to be constants we'll set further up. And do graphics.endfill. Let's just set those constants up here. So we'll have two constants const bar width. Be right back. No, sorry about that. Okay, so we'll set the bar width here to let's go with 100 and const bar height. We'll set that to uh, 10, 15. And these could even be static, so we can um, steal them from the perk class from outside. I think we'll leave it for now. Just comment them. Width of the rectangle, height of the rectangle. Just double check this, that should be okay. We're setting a colour. We could even pass that into the update if we felt like it. Drawing the rectangle from 0, 0 to a fraction of the bar width and all of the bar height, and then we end the fill. So all it leaves to do is in the level class, <coughs> we have to actually add this perk to the screen. So when we spawn this perk in our key press bit for now, it's not going to stay there forever, but we do need to add it. Um, failing that, we could just re-add them. There's no harm in re-adding things, so we could do it in the do perks bit. So we'll update the perk. We'll um, add or re-add perk to the screen. Add or re-add brackets the perk to the screen. Add child perks i. And let's position it as well based on the um, amount of perks we have. So if we start, say, in the bottom left corner, we could do position the perk, perks i dot x equals zero, so we'll start them, we'll stay on the left of the screen, perks i dot y equals stage dot stage height minus 15 first, just to offset them a bit, minus uh, let's say i times 10. We can change that later on. We re shouldn't really hard code numbers like this. They should be referenced somewhere. So that could be instead perks i dot bar height, which is why I was saying we could make it con uh, constant and static. So it could just be perk dot bar height. We're relying on every perk having the same height at the moment with that. And that 15 there could be a, a constant offset somewhere. Let's just check it works. Start the game. Hopefully now we'll see bars here when we've triggered a perk. So if I press S, you can see we've got a timer there showing how long this perk has to run. When it reaches zero, I go back to one shot. So it's definitely working. Try it again. Maybe add two of them, three of them there. And they're missing names, but you can also see that the health bar is working. Stack up loads of perks. 
sort of overtaking the screen and slowly dying off as I add them. If I start pressing faster, I could maybe reach the top of the screen. I died anyway, because I'm useless. So that works, but the perks need a name. So we could uh, spawn text fields with code, but I think that's that's probably a video in its own right, really. There's a lot going on there, more than just... You could simply just make a text field. You could just set a default text field, but it won't have our font, for example. It won't have certain weight font weight and so on. Um, so I'm a bit reluctant to do it that way. We'll do that later. I'll do. I'll probably leave it till, till another series if I'm totally honest. If I go to my library, insert a new symbol, call it perk to match the one that already exists. So this will take perk, the perk as file. Press OK and I'm just going to stick a dynamic text field in here. Need to set it to dynamic, so dynamic text, draw a box, try and get it quite small, I'm going to put the font size down to, I don't know, how big were the boxes? Were they 10, 15? Let's go with the font size of 12 and I'll adapt the code to match it. We'll set it at 0, 0 and we'll have it aligned to the left. Stretch it out a little bit. Give it an instance name, let's call it uh, perk name. Camel case again. I'm going to jump into the perk as file and in the constructor here we'll do not a good idea to do it in the constructor really, but perk name dot text equals um, T, the type. Let's just check it works. It might not work straight off about that one. Is that perk? No. Oh, you can see it underneath. So you can see it slowly reveals as we go, and then it's not being deleted. So we never did. That's a, a point. We've never removed those perks when we died. And because the bars were reset to zero size, we didn't actually notice that. So if perks i is dead, you need to remove it from the screen and then splice it. So let's uh, remove child perks i and splice it out. Let's check. Set a perk going. Slowly reveal its name. We'll fix that in a second. And we can see that it actually got removed that time. An interesting blend mode here we're going to use. Just uh, click on this text field that we had. Where am I looking now? <coughs> oh, don't think you can set it on a text field. I'll have to convert this to a symbol, which isn't ideal. I'm not sure. Try it with script here. See if I can set it. If I can do perk name, this will be a Brucey bonus if it works. Dot blend mode equals what do I want? Invert. Just try that, might not work. Press S. Oh, it does. So you can see that by setting the blend mode of the text field to invert, it's making it the opposite colour to the bar, to any content underneath it. And that's what I had in the example game. So where the box is white, the text is black, and where the, the uh, box is missing, the text is white. That's how I've done that. We're getting somewhere now. I think we still have to do energy. Should I do that in this video? Should we leave it for another one? I'll try and keep them short. I'll do it in the next video. Speaking of which, I'll see you in there. In that one. <laughs> Bye.